Last week, slash in this video right here, I talked about how the International Geophysical Year set up the satellite race between the United States and the Soviet Union in the late 1950s. But that's really only half the story, because there was a lot of inter-service rivalry within US military branches, and that's what we're talking about today on Vintage Space. When the United States announced its intention to launch a satellite as part of the IGY in July of 1955, perhaps there was no one quite as excited in the country as Werner von Braun. He was then working for the US Army developing the Redstone missile, and he had a satellite program already in the works. In fact, he'd presented it to the Assistant Secretary of Defense six months earlier. It was called Project Orbiter, and it was a very simple satellite program designed to use a Redstone rocket as the first stage and clusters of smaller Loki solid fuel rockets as the three upper stages to launch a modest satellite into orbit. However, Von Braun slash the Army's Project Orbiter was not the only satellite program in the country. Both the US Navy and the US Air Force had their own satellite program proposals. Deciding on which satellite proposal, and more importantly, which military service would launch America's first satellite, fell to Don Quarles. Quarles was a member of the NACA, NASA's predecessor organization, as well as Assistant Secretary to Defense for Research and Development and Secretary of the Air Force. Quarles, in turn, appointed an eight-man committee to make the final selection. On that committee were two representatives from each of the military branches and two men from Quarles' own offices. Chairing the committee was Homer Joe Stewart from Caltech Jet Propulsion Laboratory. The so-called Stewart Committee weighed all the options. The US Air Force's programs weren't looked upon too favorably because the Convair-built missiles that served as the core stage to the launch vehicles were offensive weapons designed as missiles. Not to mention the Air Force had a lot of other reconnaissance programs going on at the time. The US Army's Project Orbiter program had one of the same shortcomings. The missile, the Redstone missile that served as the core stage for the launch system, was also an offensive missile. It was also slightly tarnished by von Braun's Nazi record. The Navy's Vanguard, on the other hand, was centered around the Viking missile, which was an all-American-built sounding rocket. It had no military connections at all, except for the fact that it was used by the US Navy. But the downside of the proposal was that the rocket didn't actually exist in hardware. It only existed on paper at the time. Taking all this into consideration, the Stewart Committee put it to a vote. There were three votes in favor of Vanguard, two in favor of Orbiter, and two men said they just didn't know enough about rocketry to make a firm decision, and so they sided with the majority. Vanguard won. And when Von Braun found out, he was not happy, especially when he learned that one man from the committee had been out sick that day and he'd favored Orbiter. Von Braun couldn't help wonder if whether or not that man had been in the voting, he could have swayed the two undecideds in favor of the Army's proposal. Von Braun tried to change the Stewart Committee's mind, but ultimately couldn't do it. But he did have Stewart on his side. Stewart and Von Braun, along with Army Ordnance, decided to sneakily retain Project Orbiter under the guise of a composite re-entry test. They first revised Project Orbiter and then set five rockets aside and earmarked them as test beds for re-entry materials. Among them were Redstone's RS-27 and RS-29. RS-27 launched on September 20th of 1956 with an inactive fourth stage, but had that fourth stage been active, it would have been able to put a small satellite into orbit. The day after Sputnik went into orbit, Von Braun was given clearance to take RS-29 out of storage and start preparing it for a satellite launch. On January 31st of 1958, it sent the Explorer 1 satellite into orbit. This is kind of the Coles Notes version of this inter-service rivalry. It's actually a really fascinating story, and one that gets left out of the early space race far too often. And it is, as you might have guessed, a story that I do get into in my brand new book, Breaking the Chains of Gravity, which is coming out in the United States on Tuesday, January 12th. So what do you guys think? How did inter-service rivalry affect America's ability to get a satellite into orbit as part of the IGY? This is another one of those big, kind of alternative history questions, but it's still kind of a fun one to think about. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as AST Vintage Space for daily Vintage Space type content. And with a new video going up every week, subscribe right here so you never miss an episode.